Welcome back to a new video. So this was my workout from Friday and it was a decently long session and there are some ups and downs and mostly ups, not a lot of downs and uh, snatches were kind of up and down the most and everything else was pretty consistent. But uh, last week it was two plus one, two pause snatches plus a snatch. And as with all the exercises this week, I'm decreasing the sets and volume so I can continue to increase the intensity um, as I move through my progression. And so I did four sets of one plus one, and I increased it from 90 to 100, took a bigger jump. Last week, all my sets were at 90, so this week I want to take that bigger jump, as I've mentioned in a couple of the other videos this week, because the first workout of the week felt really easy. I um, wasn't in, really anticipating that just decreasing the sets and reps a little bit would make the workouts feel significantly easier. But because of that, I wanted to be more aggressive with the jumps that I took this week. There was kind of a makey miss, and you'll see a couple of those once I get to my working sets. But generally, I was happy with how the pause snatches went. Um, the first set or the first rep that I tried to do, the first pause snatch at 100, I missed. And that was just kind of a mental mental miss after that. Um, had some decent sets. Some of them were kind of you know wonky, getting all over the place. But even on the sets where, like you can see there at 90, like I'm walking forward. Like even though I'm walking forward and it's not precise where I want it to be, overhead I'm feeling stable, which is nice. There's the miss with 100. I'm not really feeling like I'm pressing out or like I'm getting smashed on the left side, even though my shoulder's not at 100%. There was kind of a makey miss. That was one that's like, I just don't want to walk forward since I'm doing a double. Um, so, I don't know, you can kind of count that as a miss <laughs> if you want. But then I always kind of use the second rep as the measure of the first one. If it's kind of like a makey miss like that, if I do a good rep on the second one, then I'm like, all right, that one was first one was fine. There, really happy with that rep. Still could even probably get it back a little bit more, but sometimes it's hard to tell because sometimes it just moves around a little bit when I'm standing it up. Um, but I was quite happy to break out the ASICs again. I had to get some more adhesive on the uh, back heel, or no, it was the front heel before I trained. Now I have to get some on the back heel. And so they're just kind of falling apart in different ways. But thankfully, it's, a, it's just like that orange plastic under the wood. Um, so it's really easy to fix. It just has, I just have to get enough adhesive on there, which I think I do. I have the shoe goo and I was just kind of pulling off the, I think it was the right heel. Um, I pulled off the little plastic thing and put a bunch of shoe goo underneath and then put some athletic tape around it just to kind of pull it into it. And it should kind of stay on pretty well. So um, I should be able to use them a little bit more. I actually find them really comfortable um, to wear. Uh, getting them on isn't the best because the tongue isn't really that thick like the Romaleos one is, but um, once they're on, I actually find them pretty comfortable. I've um, heard that some people think they're a little bit overrated, and I I would say any shoe that's vintage like this, like that's, I would say, overpriced for, you know, what it is, a weightlifting shoe, is, of course, going to be um, overrated because, you know, you can't really, like these, if you get a brand new, really nice pair is going to be like $1,000. Like, that's just ridiculous for a pair of shoes and not necessary. And even like the pair I got here were like all, you know, kind of beat up, not really too bad, but they're beat up and they're like 300 bucks or whatever. And it's like, that's obviously overpriced for shoes, <laughs> for any pair of shoes. So it's definitely overrated in that sense. But as far as the comfort, I was pleasantly surprised. Like I, I think the weight and everything in them is really good. And um, I definitely would, like if you're looking for a pair of shoes, would just get Romaleos. I think those are probably better and more durable. Um, and you can find Romaleo 2s, the, the best kind, I think, probably on eBay. Um, it's pretty easy to find a decent pair. And if you really don't care about the color, you can get a pretty cheap kind. But if you want to be really particular and get a cool uh, color, like a red and black kind, um, then you have to pay a lot more, which I don't really think it's worth it because it's literally the same pair of shoes. Plus, I mean, with all the paints and stuff you can buy, like mine, uh, Romaleos, I bought... Uh, some acrylic paint and I painted the swooshes red so that's why mine look red and black because I just painted the swooshes so like you can do little things like that um, obviously I wouldn't want to do anything to the, the ASICs other than you know, potentially get them restored I might kind of look into that to see if there's like a shoe restoration person that could uh, make them look nice and like really fix the bottoms I think there might be you know something like that maybe a cobbler maybe someone on Instagram could like really kind of make them look nice uh, and then that would be cool to have just to have them fully restored and maybe, you know, increase the value, I suppose, if I ever wanted to sell them one day, but honestly probably wouldn't because I just, the aesthetics of them are just, it's too cool to have. But after the uh, the snatches, you saw there on my uh, last set of 100 that I missed the second rep, and so I came back and just did an additional single. So I think for the most part, did a decent job on them. Um, when I probably increase the weight next week, probably will only go up to 105. I don't think going anything more than that would be smart. And it's just, you know, it's a 
difficult two days doing all the work from the block and the clean and jerks of course uh, in addition to the snatches from the blocks and then coming back and doing the same weight essentially from the floor for doubles um, definitely a couple difficult days of training in a row but i think it's a kind of a good mix of where i have a lot of clean work on the day two and then the block work all you know a lot of volume really it's like day two three and four have a lot of reps of everything and then the day five is you know the um, snatch balance and front squat plus jerk so it's a easier session or a quicker one in that regard which speaking of that i'm recording this on saturday so the day after this training session obviously you'll see the video um, but I should get my weight, weightlifting house bar today, and so I should be able to use it for uh, my session, assuming it gets here at a reasonable time. I think it's supposed to get here between noon and 2, so it should get here relatively soon from when I'm recording this. Um, definitely in time for my training session, uh, but excited about that. should be nice uh, since my roommate will eventually move out uh, with his wife. Um, they're both still trying to find a house. It's really hard in this housing market, but I wanted to get one just to have uh, a new bar and see how the weightlifting house bar was and it was uh, on a pretty good sale um, with like the first time purchase discount as well as their discount for the bar plus no tax and shipping on it it was all included in it which was it was like 369 uh, which is cheaper than like a rogue training bar which is uh, pretty impressive to get it down um, in price that much and hopefully you know it's a quality bar which hopefully it is but uh, the front squats as you saw were all at 120 those went well they felt pretty I would say relatively easy um, they're definitely getting more difficult each week, but I think I should be able to continue to increase them. And then as, you know, when I circle back to the beginning of this uh, program and I'm doing really high reps, hopefully add a little bit more weight than I did the previous time. Kind of excited about that because I think that is me doing repetitions front squat is the correct thing for me to do. And honestly, doing this bench press, I think is probably on the right path as well, just to get more upper body strength in general and just to be more durable, I suppose. I do need to start adding in some um, corrective exercises for bench press, like face pulls and just different pulling things for my upper back and the back of the shoulders to help with um, some of my, actually I'm getting some discomfort in my right shoulder. I think a lot of that's just soreness from the bench press, but um, I'm starting to get into a nice groove with it and just getting the practice with it. So I should be able to kind of, not necessarily build super quickly, because I mean like 230, 230 pounds for a set of five like I'm starting to get back to like working sets that I did when I was consistently bench pressing I don't know what my best five sets of five for the bench press is I want to say it's probably like 250 or 260 it might be around there but my best bench press for a single ever is 330 I don't necessarily want to get back or have a goal of getting back up to there I just want to be able to continually progress these sets of five put some mass on my chest and upper or front delts I suppose and just kind of get more upper body work kind of more from a bodybuilding aspect but also from the fact that just being stronger in the upper body will be good um, for pressing and overhead stuff in general probably and it's most likely not going to hurt if I as long as I continue to kind of do it how I am now trying to focus on normal ranges of motion I'm not trying to max it out I'm just doing you know sets with that but I mean if it starts to get you know really uncomfortable then I certainly wouldn't mind or certainly wouldn't be opposed to just taking it off but uh, it's certainly something that I like having it. I like that it's not uh, going off the rails. A lot of times when I start bench pressing again, it starts to really bother our shoulder or wrist or something, and then I just stop. And this time I've kind of gotten through that and just kind of keep hammering hammering through with it. But uh, I'll probably keep them at sets of five, and if I get kind of stagnant for a while, then maybe adjust it from there. But I'm not too, too worried about peaking it up, just worried about trying to get some volume in with that movement. But a very productive session overall. Very happy with how everything moved. Move, was able to move up the weights for all the main exercises. And tomorrow, be able to use the weightlifting house bar. Or I guess today, since I'm recording this on Saturday, be able to use the weightlifting house bar and do some snatch balances as well as some front squats for jerks. But that's enough blank space at the end. I'll talk to you all in the next video. And I hope you all have a great day. Peace.